Hello my fellow scientists, today we're going to talk about the iron battery. For those of you who may be new here, the iron battery is an ongoing project in the Allen lab in which we attempt to make an iron anode work with an iron 3 plus cathode to make a battery or electrochemical cell. The thing about batteries is that they're easy to build but hard to build well. A good battery should be high energy, high power, inexpensive, and rechargeable. Lithium ion batteries are really expensive per kilowatt hour stored. One main reason that lithium ion batteries are so expensive is that they have to be assembled very precisely. They have to be away from oxygen and water. They also have to be made with extreme precision in terms of their consistency from battery to battery so that they can meet demanding applications like electric vehicles and high power applications in home storage. They also have a really high energy density and high power density. And if that energy is released quickly, they can actually explode. So there's a great YouTube video on why lithium ion batteries are in specifically so expensive. And I'll put a link in the description. So we are building a battery with much lower energy density. It's much more stable. It is also much safer and it's also very cheap. Unfortunately, that makes it basically unusable for mobile applications like cars and cell phones because the energy density is just so low. However, the battery might be ending up being useful for storing renewable energy uh, during times when it's produced so that it can then be liberated when that energy is needed. Sort of time shifting energy that's renewable and intermittent. So in the current version of the electrochemical cell, iron is in the form of steel wool and it oxidizes releases electrons. Those electrons flow through a load while the iron rusts. This is very similar to how the Edison cell electrode works, the iron electrode on the Edison cell. But those electrons need somewhere to go. So for this to work, the other side of the battery needs to absorb those electrons, and we build the other side of the battery in the form of an iron-3 salt. Now iron-3 can come in many forms, iron-3 sulfate, iron-3 citrate, iron ferricyanide, and ferric hydroxide. So far, the best mix we've found is iron, sulfate, potassium chloride, all precipitated with sodium hydroxide. This makes a solid that's a very reversible form, so that means the final battery is very rechargeable. We like this a lot. I've been recommended to try ferricyanide again, and it is a really good electro, uh, electrochemical reagent. Now, it sounds scary with the cyanide bit, but the bond between iron and cyanide is very strong, so it doesn't release cyanide gas under normal circumstances. Now that could work on the negative electrode because iron three cyanide can be easily reduced to iron two cyanide and that's great. But with the iron battery, I've tried to keep the electrode electrolyte consistent across both electrodes and from the negative and positive. So that way the cheap separator can be used and if it leaks, it discharges the battery but it doesn't damage the battery. The problem is that if we put very cyanide at both the positive and negative electrodes. When it's at the positive electrode, it could react with iron two plus to make uh, ferrofericyanide, which is Prussian blue. Now, ideally, there would only be ferrocyanide at the negative side and there wouldn't be any ferricyanide, but nothing's perfect. And my hypothesis is the battery will just slowly degrade itself as the ferricyanide reacts with iron two and makes Prussian blue on the electrodes. And it's harder to get electrons in and out of Prussian blue, and so the battery will just become less and less responsive over time. But we are trying it, and we'll see how it goes, and I'll let you all know as soon as we get some results. The current goal is to simplify the construction and chemistry of the iron battery 1.0. Link in the description to that. We tried a bunch of alternatives to simplify this. Last week, my student Deepak set up a battery with a very similar chemistry to the old iron battery 1.0, but in the past we made that with iron chloride, potassium sulfate, and sodium hydroxide. He simplified to iron chloride, ammonium chloride, and sodium hydroxide, and then either this or the old chemistry were precipitated until the pH reaches 7.5. So in the new version, we removed potassium and replaced sulfate with ammonium, and that seemed to work pretty well, but we're looking at cycle stability, so we'll see whether or not that actually lasts and holds up. Now, I hypothesized that the sulfate may have been disrupting the crystal formation of iron hydroxide, and so that made the cell more reversible. And I'm not sure how well the ammonium is going to help that happen, but we'll see how it goes. And it looks like, so far, we can conclude that the potassium ions can be left out. If the cell cycles well, we can simplify more by assembling uh, it in the discharge state instead of the charged state in the, 
if we use the discharge state, we can use a single electrolyte instead of assembling it with two electrolytes uh, as we do now. So I'll let you know how all that goes. Thank you for turning in. If you want to make your own iron battery, I hope you'll let me know how that goes. I make videos on science, science news, and my own research right here in the Allen Lab.